Hello and welcome to the Climbing Daily Wednesday news show. Today we have emotional scenes from America and Q goes back. Hello. He's back. <laughs> so Teresa is away on holiday. Uh, she's in Sayus. Is she? Yeah. I didn't realise. Yep. Her, her and it was Melissa Leneve, but I think she's left. So it's Biography. Just, uh, apparently Melissa was dabbling. Melissa right? Leneve and, and Teresa on holiday together. They were and then not anymore. <laughs> Oh, what happened? Melissa left. Ah, okay. I don't want to say it's because of Teresa, but maybe the evidence is there. Isn't it? Right. Okay. Clear. What have we got first? I am starting with IFSC news as we go for the second Boulder World Cup of the season. For the second round of the Boulder World Cup season, Salt Lake City was chosen to host the event instead of the usual Vail location. This is a back-to-back -back competition with the next one taking place this coming weekend. The crowds were back for the first time since Corona and clearly helped the atmosphere of the whole competition. Team USA were the big story in the women's finals. Two teammates, Brooke Rabatou and Natalia Grossman, went head to head and were ecstatic to be in the finals together as they are best friends and training partners. Both women flashed the opening boulders and in a tense final, things were close. Natalia sent the tricky boulder three and it all came down to the final climb, where Natalia needed at least the zone in order to win. After composing herself, she sent the boulder in the last 40 seconds, getting her the gold medal. Young French climber Ochien Berton took the silver medal and Brooke Rabatou came in third. For the men, it was Adam Ondra who continued his form from Meiringen to become the first back-to-back -back men's winner since 2017. An inverted foot jam on M3 certainly played to his strengths, but he was on fine form, topping all four boulders and flashing all but the first one. Gold medal for Adam. Meji Shellac once again demonstrated the depth of the French team, getting a silver medal, and he's certainly one of the early favourites to qualify for the 2024 Olympics. Jakob Schubert took the bronze medal, a return of form for him, having previously not made semi-finals in Meiringen. Three tops and three zones were enough for his medal. What a competition. I, I don't know if you saw that wonderful video that I think Brooke put up on her Instagram, like her and Natalia running to each other when they both made the finals. They were just like so happy, so genuinely happy that they'd both been there. It was Very good. Beautiful, beautiful moment. Home advantage playing a big role. Obviously. Possibly, yeah. I, I mean, Natalia is, is like, she's really come through though. And my, my ringing, she was amazing. So she's just building momentum, I think. Yeah. And what about the Olympiads? Who, who of them were noticeably missing from the uh, the final Macroom well, stat man? Shauna Coxie was yeah. the big sort of British uh, loss from the final. She didn't make semi-finals. Yeah. Her first comp back in a long, long time. So yeah. if we're looking at sort of like where athletes are that, and I know on her Instagram, she was disappointed by that. I don't think she was going to do many competitions this year. So mm. it'd be interesting now that she perhaps hasn't placed where she wanted to, whether she does more in order to get that comp training in. Sure. Whether she's injured, who yeah. knows. Um, who else didn't make it? Uh, Petra, Petra, yeah. Petra mm. didn't make semifinals either. So a few, a few notable absences. Do you reckon it's a case of just being a bit out of form or saving themselves for the Olympics? I, I really don't know with those two quite what's going on. I think certainly for, for Shauna, there's definitely a like, I think she's fairly injured at the moment. So she's mm. having to pick and choose her competitions. Yeah. Petra didn't have a wonderful time in Maringin either. But you know, then I think it's a funny time because you get people like Jakob Schubert, for example. He didn't make semifinals last time. Now he's made a third place. You know, yeah, it doesn't yeah, really yeah. mean a lot, but it yeah. is, we're all trying to pick apart what the stats mean. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but no, it's good to see that Adam Andre still at the top and Jakob, I think for me those two are the, fa the, the those two are the favourites, and then plus you, you stick in Timo Narazaki into yeah. that. So those three, I can't see further than for like uh, for medal placings. It's hard to, isn't it? Especially Jakob. And obviously we're not talking about chatting about Yanya this weekend because she wasn't there. Mm. A lot of Slovenian team wasn't there this this in Salt Lake City. So yeah. again, we see these Olympic tactics starting to. to I think I've, a lot comes down to like big uh, big performances as well, like big time performers. They're yeah. the guys that you want to look out for. So Adam Andra is obviously one. Jakob is one. I'm, I'm not ruling out Shona or Petra just at the moment. I think they they know when to turn it on when the moment is right. Exactly. It's comp experience. So if they're like yeah. in good form, kind of to, coming towards it, I think they'll be able to pull something out of the bag. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we were chatting this morning about this and, and, and you were saying, look, it doesn't matter what anyone really does. It's just down to that Olympic Games yeah. moment. Yeah. And, and I think All you're right. All tactics will be vindicated if they win a medal. Exactly. Basically. Exactly. But, but... What I found super interesting about this weekend is like, all right, there's there's youth, right? Like Miho Nanaka is 24. She came fourth. Ute. Yeah, the youth. She is youth. Yeah. And yet there's a youth below the youth. There's Oriane, 16, Natalia, 
yep. with Rabbitu. I think we're seeing the next generation coming through here and it's quite exciting. It's very exciting. The 2024 Olympics will be incredibly exciting. Although I wouldn't put it past Sean McCall to still be there. Yeah, the still hang on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right, next up, speaking of older climbers, uh, Mr. Steve McClure, the legend that is, has uh, flashed some big routes in the UK. UKC have reported the British climber Steve McClure has flashed the route Impact Day, EA forward slash 96C. The route was originally graded E9, but some later ascensionists have thought more like E8. The lower wall is easier climbing, but virtually unprotected, and the upper hard crux with a tough move off a mono hold is above a reasonable gear. Steve did not have much knowledge of the top of the route, but was able to watch a team of Adrian Nellums, Charlie Woodford and Neil Gresham work the bottom in order to get a good feel of the moves, therefore foregoing the on-site. Hazel Finley decked out on the route back in 2012, so it was perhaps with this knowledge that he got the beta for the bottom, unprotected section. Nevertheless, a brilliant ascent with a great write-up on the UKC. So, Mr. Steve McClure, no matter how old he is, and I don't know how old he is anymore, but he seems to keep pulling out these very impressive ascents out of his back pocket. Uh, and this is the latest one, E8 forward slash E9, a flash. How often does that happen? Rarely. And, and for people who are like, oh, those grades, this is English trad grades, remember? So just look that up before you think it's super easy in terms of those E8, numbers. E8, E9, 60, I mean, you can't really, like probably like an A, B maybe, sport a, route? A bit easier than that. Yeah, but A, the, A plus. A six tech uh, English six C. You'd have to look at the conversion. I can't actually remember the top of my head. It's not quite that hard, but it's still probably it's E8, the E nine. So the risk, the risk uh, it, of impact is that's exactly it. And as you said, Shauna decked out. Not Shauna. I've got Shauna on the brain. Today. Uh, Hazel, Hazel decked out on it. Exactly, exactly. But yeah, nice one. And uh, what a team: Adrian Nellums, Charlie Woodford, Neil Gresham. You'd probably have to be British based to know who those guys are, but that's a bit of a legendary team. Yeah, they are a legendary team. Um, we are moving now on to now. Jeez. Ah. Bleh. We had a very Darrison bite. Let's go to Terrace Terry's and those for the bit. They have the pet. Apologies. Uh, to the 9A <laughs> roundoff. <laughs> Gonzalo La Rocha has climbed the 30 meter long 9A slash plus Las Menjnas in Rodella, as reported by 8A.nu. He was working it in the autumn and sent it on his fifth day of the season. 8A.nu have also reported that Giuseppe Nolasco has climbed TCT 9A Graver, Italy. The route was first ascended by Stefano Gusolfi in 2014. Alex Garriga has sent the 8C plus slash 9A panorama as reported by 88.nu. He did the 22 meter route on his ninth try, having fallen multiple times on the last move. It's a techie route involving specific knee bars and bouldery cruxes. Okay, I'm not uh, entirely down with your 9A roundup. Right. So I have another report and it is a 9A plus. There's some forward slashes in there and stuff like that, but I thought I would give B? it its own little story because it's Cameron Horst. Right. Is it 9A slash forward slash plus or 9A plus slash B? All of that stuff. Wow. 8A.nu have reported that Cameron Horst, son of renowned climber trainer Eric Horst, has made an ascent of the Joe Kinder route Bone Tomahawk, 9A plus at Flynn Cave, Utah. The route initially graded at 9A plus by Kinder has since had suggestions of a downgrade to 9A forward slash plus. But Cameron has been pretty firm that this is way harder than any of the 9As he has worked and so suggests a personal grade of 9A plus, which is in fact the original grade. So not sure it's that personal. The route took him 15 sessions. So it's 9A plus. Uh, I'm sorry, if Cameron Hoare says it's 9A plus, he's an Eric Hoare's son. Yeah. He's also a quarterback. Is he? He went to college, he played quarterback, didn't climb full time for a while came back, is now climbing full time, has a ponytail, looks buff, uh, uh, and is climbing 90 plus. This guy is my hero. Right, he seems it, he seems it. I like him. I'm so over climbers standing on the fence with this stuff. If Therese was here, she'd be like moaning about the pluses, but it is true, like, it seems we've got in this thing at the moment where everyone's just on the fence permanently. And he appears not to be, he just- I don't think it's the grade. fault of the climbers, I think it's the fault of the grading system. Wow. Just putting it out there. Wow. I think we need to rehaul the whole grading system and just go one to infinity. Right. <laughs> like they do in Australia. Where, where does this land on the infinity chart? Um, I don't know, you'd have to count it up. Close to infinity. No, this would be like... Um, Final third of infinity. Well, if you start, start with one is what? Like a one. Right. Two is like... Two. No, like a one A. <laughs> right. 
I don't know. So there's, there's letters as well in your system. No, 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 no. So like, I'm trying to, I'm like going, so for example, if you go, uh, to be honest, no matter how we go, every time you get to a point where you're like, this route is in between 24 and 25, what is it, 24.5? Yeah, but it's in between 24 and 24.5. I've climbed so many 24s and 25s. Yeah. It's a 24.25. Yeah. Where, where does it end? I, I, it ends by climbers just being like, you know what, this is probably easy for me, but it's still the hard grade and therefore it's the hard grade. Yeah, even if they can get a knee bar with a knee pad Doesn't or a matter. book or it's a Bible, grade. even if there's a Bible in their, on their head and they do a head jam. That's different. That is, that is downgradable. Is that different? Oh, it's totally downgradable at that point. What about if you like had like a, uh, like, you know, for example, if he, like, he's a football player, mm. where if he had like a football helmet yeah. jammed into a knob off with, with like sticky things on the side. Yeah. Is that aid? Is it aid? And does it matter on the grade? Our helmets aid. Our helmets aid. A clothes aid. I would argue that that's a good question. Our helmets aid. <laughs> I, I have I have helmet jammed before. I, exactly. There you go. I was desperate and about to fall off, but I've done it. <laughs> you just like your the strap was just going as your chin. I was in the Peter shit. It was this horrendous crack, and literally I had my head in it, and I was like, I chin jammed. Nice little with rest. My head in it. I got head jam head jam rest. It was okay. I mean, it was stupid, but it was okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if nobody sees, if nobody's filming, then it didn't really happen. That's true. My mate was. If laughing, nobody though. sees and no, if nobody's filming, it's probably like a nine eight on site forward slash eight plus. True. I feel like we've lost track of where we're at now. I don't know where have are we you? got. Have we got some? New, I haven't got another. I've got story. another new story, uh, and it's an Alpine one. Planet Mountain reports that Czech alpinists Zanadek Hak and Jaroslava Banski have successfully completed the first traverse of Katrungshar 6,030 meters in Nepal. They climbed the north face of the mountain into the saddle between Katrungshar and Cholo, then followed the northwest ridge to the top, returned to the saddle and descended the south face. The pair managed to climb in one day and had to battle unsteady snow conditions and uncharacteristically cold conditions for the ascent which took them just over a day. What's worse, most of their expedition got COVID, so they had to isolate upon their return to Kathmandu. Expeditions aren't what they used to be. So expeditions in the time of COVID yeah. uh, means that people get COVID. Yeah. Therefore, you have to isolate when you get back, mm -hmm. which probably isn't a bad thing because you're so it's messed awesome. up after having to deal with that route which sounds sketchy isn't yeah it? i mean there has been there's been quite a lot of controversy surrounding the whole expedition thing recently with a lot of people saying really it shouldn't be going ahead mm -hmm. i mean you get you get this situation where you get like foreign tourists coming into an area and spending a lot of time very close together and mm -hmm. it's just like everest base camp apparently has been quite rampant for it so it's just people Eesh. being like, is this a good idea? Like, what are we doing? Sharing now? oxygen. Yes, that doesn't help. And and just the question of oxygen. I know they're starting to take oxygen canisters un or semi-used one back to hospitals from base camps. Really? Good yeah. insight. Yeah. Where did you find that out? Uh, I, I, I was quite... In, I'm, oh, it's high altitude, man. Anyway, I'm interested in this. But um, So I know that's happening. And Killian Jone as well is also there attempting the, <sighs> you know, the Uli thing that he sadly passed away attempting to do. I think he's there trying that. I think. Okay. But he's certainly acclimatising for something To be confirmed. Yes. Next week? Sure. Go on, do some research. Find I'll, out. I'll, I'll do it. I, I, we, actually, we actually talked about this. He is there. Do, I, know, I don't know why I'm on the fence. He is there trying. <laughs> yeah. It. You're talking um, about climbers exactly. not getting off the fence. It's because I never Matt, want to quite, I want to quite want to say it if I haven't got the information in front of me. But yeah, he is trying uh, the, the link up thing. Okay. So I know he, he took like an evening run up to the base of Lutzi the other day just to sort of climatise. That makes me nervous when... People do stuff like that. Him and his mate literally are running out of base camp in like full what you'd expect to go up a glacier in but without a rope, I think, just like pegging it along. It's crazy. Insane. Mm. Crazy. Least, yeah, that's mental. Yeah, pegging people. Pegging. Yeah. High altitude pegging. Nice. Uh, let's move on to. That's it. It's done. No, uh, you want to talk about Yoga Hoven? Yes, I do want to talk about Yoga Hoven because uh, this is something that happened kind of over the weekend. A few people drew, drew my attention to it. Mm -hmm. Yoga Hoven put up a post about him soloing a route. Apologies for the noise. There's somebody digging a massive hole outside our, our studio. They really are, yeah. And they but stopped. I think you'll forgive us. Yoga Hoven put up a post about him soloing a route. There was some implications in there about the fact he was struggling mm -hmm. um, with mental health. Or yep. Something wasn't quite right. He then put up a subsequent post. I don't want to go too much into this because it, it is complicated and you should read the two posts. But Jörg Verhoeven seems to not be in the best place at the moment. Yeah. So obviously we send him our best regards. And, sure. But I think there was something very interesting about this connection between mental health and climbing, how sometimes it can help mm -hmm. and how sometimes perhaps it's a bit of a mask to what's going on under the surface. Yeah, yeah. I think like there was a bit of a reaction to the fact that people were going, yeah, great, well done, amazing. Yeah. Uh, and I think his point of the post was that he was putting himself in danger and the reason he was putting himself in danger is because he wasn't 
quite thinking correctly or his his mental health wasn't great yeah um i uh, that, that first post it wasn't it didn't it doesn't like hit you in the face as something completely out of the blue it is yeah. quite subtle in the yeah. way that it's like delivered uh also because he has like two camera angles on it and it looks quite professionally done yeah yeah uh so when i first saw it i was like what is, what is this i yeah. didn't quite get it but then katia salwan his his wife i think they're married has obviously as you said put, put out that post afterwards mm -hmm. uh so yeah so it's i don't think he's in a great place so we yeah it, it, it Jorg is somebody that we've worked with a lot in the past yeah he's a great guy incredibly funny yeah like huge character of like the climbing world so yeah we, we send our wishes best wishes to him exactly all right let's do the 9b counter <laughs> Have we got any 9B counters? There are no 9Bs on the 9B counter, no. So what do we do in this section? Uh, usually we bring up something irrelevant to fill the space. Do you want to fill? Oh, a beautiful dress. I thank you, Phil. Okay. No, well, okay. Is... Phil. So she says Phil, not feel. Who's Phil? Uh, I haven't got anything. Let's just move on because we've spent so much time in this new show already. Let's enough. be more succinct. <laughs> So before we go any further, 9B counter t-shirts are available. They're yeah. going to be flashing up on screen right now. For the podcasts, if you don't have a 9B counter t-shirt, you're not really a podcast. So that's what I'm saying. Right. If you haven't got any merch, then you're not part of the team. Definitely um, need merch. You do yeah. definitely need merch. Easy. Merch looks good. I like the hat. Thanks very much. That's good. You nice. got a little, little squiggle there? I've, got, I've actually got it underneath. Look at mm. that. Ooh. <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. The V is over your titular area wow titular eh? clavacular <laughs> surely clavacular uh right what's next uh into a bit of media she talks to media shop well shop media? shop stuffs no let's talk shop stuff you want shop stuff <laughs> let's talk shop stuff shop Go stuffs then. um i'm talking tonight at number one I still reckon Tanaya, maybe alongside Red Chili, is probably the best, most comfortable performance shoes you can buy. What's your favourite Tanaya shoe? I haven't worn many of them, so uh, we've got some coming that I'm going to wear. So the Oasi. Oasi. Classic, like, you can climb classic, hard in that Classic one, Oasi. Classic Oasi, exactly. Uh, and then moon pads as well. Have you ever used a moon pad? No, but I've, I've noticed that they come in all, all shapes and sizes. <laughs> yeah. There's some really small ones. And humongous ones. Yeah, Like the yeah. Pluto or something it's called? Oh, the Pluto, the blue and red. It's just massive. Oh, it's nice. It's just a planet. If I was going to get a pad, uh, which was called the Pluto, I'd probably get the moon Pluto. <laughs> you would have snapped something we're like, we're making a Pluto as well. Yeah. Do you need Fight. a pad right now? Uh, I steal Epic TV's ones. <laughs> so no. But if I have a branch out of my own, genuinely yes, because my mum moved house the other day and binned my pad. Oh, really? Yeah, gone. Well, I didn't pin, I think we gave it away. Was that your bed whenever you went home to sleep? Uh, just it could have been. Your, it was, it was the most ridiculous body pad. It was a triangular one from Mammut. As in, it felt folded into a triangle. How did you carry a triangle? Well, fine. Like, like on a, your head? It was like the idea is like, it's a backpack, which it was because you could fit stuff inside it. But it didn't fit in any cars and it folded weird and it was very silly. That's old school. Yeah, I should not have bought it. Uh, right, what's next? Are we talking about media? <laughs> yes. Have you said hi to the podcasts yet? Uh, hi, podcasts. How are you doing? What's uh, anything that audio-wise that you wanted to share with them? I can just make this bit really audio-tastic. Audio-tastic. Very nice. That's All right. Nice hi, show. podcasts. Thanks for listening. Thanks for making it this far. I uh, hope your drive's going well. Um, I'm going to be talking about media. First up, we've got a lovely little documentary that the Matt Groom producer man, not the presenter man, the producer man. Hat on. With a, with a, with a bit of presenting on top. Yeah. Uh, he produced this lovely little documentary about a lady with Haglund's, what's the word? Disease syndrome. Syndrome. Disease is a little It's a bit heavy. harsh, isn't it? Yeah, syndrome. Mm. Here's a clip. I have a genetic predisposition on my heel, uh, which is named uh, Haglund disease. Uh, it consists in a... Um, protuberance of the heel bone, uh, which became inflamed and caused me pain. Uh, for this reason, I can't wear the normal shoes because they 
put uh, on me uh, a lot of pressure and uh, I, I can't climb and I, I can't uh, uh, wear them uh, for a long time. I made a lot of testing uh, and we managed to find a solution uh, which consisted in uh, replace the ordinary rubber on, uh, of the normal shoes with uh, an elastic. The advantage is uh, uh, having uh, less pressure put in on my heel. But that's not all because uh, with the elastic uh, I couldn't climb well uh, because I couldn't put my heel on um, on the wall. Uh, there, there was the risk to, to, to break the, the elastic. So we replaced the elastic with uh, uh, a rubber but not the ordinary rubber of the um, uh, normal shoes. The advantage is uh, having uh, uh, less pressure. So that was, yeah, kind of an interesting video. Uh, not a sponsored one as well, not sponsored by Vibram. We were just interested in our athlete's story and it is a cool story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, we would normally put um, paid promotion. Paid promotion. We it. started paid doing that, we? Yeah. We are, we are those peoples. Um, but yeah, no, very cool. For next up, we've got a destination guide with 27 crags uh, about Margal F. Here's a little clip. Hi there, this is Margalef. Uh, we're located in the very heart of the Montsant Sierra Natural Park. This is a great climbing area with over 1,400 climbing routes. In 1996 it was when Jordi Bow started with vaulting. And he came here and he just couldn't believe the number of walls that were waiting to be vaulted. He started in Canlepa Fields, which is a crack which is very close to the dam area. And then they moved on, he and his friends vaulting some other sectors, including the laboratory, which is, as its name explains, the place where they started creating these very hard routes. So the reason we are putting this up now, I think it's important to say that we're not necessarily encouraging everyone to go traveling and do whatever they want right now obviously there's covid and it's like you have to have your vaccines and stuff like that but anyway that is a destination guide for when it kind of opens up again and it kind of is opening up yeah uh so spain's kind of people are moving around in spain yeah it's off the uk travel ban list well from there letting people from the uk in anyway okay this will date pretty quickly i reckon yes. <laughs> by tomorrow that's a new show it's yeah, always it day, like, it? this changes every day but anyway so we're, there's a couple more of them from spain yeah um and then there's one coming from france as well but basically it's just like if you want to go on a weekend or a week long trip we'll kind of give you as much information as you possibly can so that you can i'm looking at you but yeah. I'm, you know looking yeah. at them uh, and they can buy it on the Epic TV shop as well. Yes, well, the Crags. 27 Gra Crags um, app, yes, you can get it on the Epic TV shop. Nice. So, And it's got all the topos. Bang it's it. pretty cool. I love looking at a topo and you're going... Tick, 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 it is good. I, I'm a bit old school though. I do prefer a paper version, but that's just me. I like. I just like having it... For, like, I like that feeling you got a flick. Kindle, so I do have a you're Kindle a Kindle man. man. I'm a Kindle man. I'm a, a paper. book man, you're a Kindle man. <laughs> it's true. So we're, we're in verse. It's true. Uh, anyway, comment of the week. I feel like we should sing, because A, maybe there isn't a song, or B, I'm back, so I have got... We've we got... definitely should sing, yeah. Okay, uh, I'll go bass, you go alto. Okay. Comment <laughs> of the week. week. Oh, That's far better than anybody's ever sent in. People have missed that, haven't they? Yeah. Oh. Right, what's your comment? Uh, my comment is from, uh, it was every single <coughs> week, I take a screenshot and then I close down my computer and I lose the screenshot. Uh, hang on, my comment, no, I got it, I got it. My comment is from P. Orth, and he's saying, anyone else pronounce Yosemite like Vegemite? Lol. Did you get the same one? No, 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 but I, I, I get that. I Go on then, that. pronounce it like Vegemite. Y Yosemite. Yosemite. Yeah. Is that a thing? Do people do that? Definitely. People that aren't from the US old of A yeah. uh, would like, uh, we used to work with a Finnish guy who would always say Yosemite. Yosemite. Yeah. And it's like, um, <laughs> my kids are really into Harry Potter at the moment. And somebody said to me the other day, was like, when you read Harry Potter, did you always think that Hermione was called Hermione, Hermione or yeah. something? <laughs> I never knew how it was pronounced. I do this thing where I read names in books and like, I make up my own name for it. Yeah. Because I can't be bothered to work what out. What was Hermione to you? Oh, just like, like, it doesn't matter. I just see the name and I know who the character mm, is. So I don't... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm. That's what you should do with French. Right. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, right, my comment of the week is um, shout out to the kids for keeping Matt's ego in check. That's impossible to keep that in check. What is that in reference to? This was last week. There were like kid crushes. And oh, right, okay, obviously right. like these kids are like this big, like six years old, and they'll be better than we will ever be. So nothing sports. new. It's just yeah, like it's just normal same stuff. Same old exactly. Same old Matt the same joke. <laughs> okay. Nice. That's it. That's it. Done. Uh for more special Matt sound effects, three thirty. You doing still doing sound effects? My sound sa- oh what, on the thing. Do your sound effect now? Okay. <laughs> See you later, guys. That's good, right? <laughs> Quick shout out to my mum, by the way. Sorry, this is like for anybody who's hung on to this long. Uh, my mum is running a, a half marathon this this weekend. Oh. Uh, just giving Kirsty Pilcher. Uh, she's... In uh, Yeah. She's running for cancer. Nice. Good luck, mum. Love you.